Hey everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to the next installment in my Show Me Your Garden series. So this series, what I am doing while I am laid up, I have a broken foot and I am not able to get up and move around. And so I am sitting in this chair for most of my day, but you all have rallied and sent in pictures and videos of your gardens all across the country and all across the world internationally. We have a bunch of submissions um, from a bunch of different zones. So what I am doing, I have made a Show Me Your Gardens playlist and I am going to be doing a Show Me Your Gardens video from zone three, USDA zone three, all the way up through USDA zone 10. Uh, so the USDA zones, they do go down to zone one and up to 13, possibly even 14. Um, but I think those are a little extremes and we don't have a bunch of gardeners in those areas. So keep an eye out for your zones. I've already put up my zone three video and a lot of you made a really, really good point that I don't know why, but I didn't even think about. If a plant is hardy in zone three or somebody can grow it in zone three, most likely most of you can also grow that plant in your garden. So it's really, it's really good inspiration just to see, just to get some ideas for other plants. Now, if you live on the really high zones like I do, I live in zone 9B, zone 10, even some places in zone eight, um, we have a limit, like a lower limit, like I can't plant certain plants that can't handle our heat. So of course there's a limit, you can't just plant anything, um, but there is a lot of crossover. So all of these videos are gonna be so inspirational. I cannot wait to show you all these submissions that I got. I mean, I was, I have to admit, I did not think I was gonna get very many submissions for zone three and zone four. You all, <laughs> you all are impressive. You have beautiful gardens in zone three and zone four, and I got tons of submissions. So thank you so much. So let's get started. The first garden I have to share with you today is a fantastic video that was submitted by Carissa. Carissa lives in zone four in Kamloops, British Columbia. Carissa actually has her own YouTube channel called Carissa's Garden. And now I am going to link anybody that has a social media channel, I'm gonna link them below. So make sure you check the, check out their link, follow them. They're going to be so much good inspiration for those of you that are in similar zones, right? So if you're in zone three, four, five, I don't know, six, it'd be great to follow Carissa's garden just to see what she does in her gardening zone four. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to start the video, grab a cup of coffee, sit back and relax. It is fantastic. Hey, welcome here. Hello to Janie and my other gardening friends. I am Carissa and this is Carissa's garden. Um, we are in the winter <laughs> here, or at least the beginnings of it, end of the fall, that type of thing. Um, so unfortunately my garden is put to bed. Um, the first frost we had was about mid-October, a little bit um, normal for our area. I garden here in zone 4B in um, south central bc canada so our gardening season like i said first frost is about october and then our last is usually may so that gives us a, a good break in the winter to kind of dream about what we would like to do um but yeah so a little bit about me uh we garden here on five acres uh behind me you can see there's a vegetable garden um i love to landscape i like to try and see what works what doesn't work in our area um I really am inspired by cottage gardens, but also wildlife gardens. There's just something so beautiful about, you know, a formal um, put together landscaping bed. But then there's also the beauty in that sort of wild look that just looks like, you know, it was planted there by itself. <laughs> so I definitely like a, a wide variety of different gardening styles. Um, I also have a cut flower garden at the bottom of our property um, and I sell bouquets to a local shop in town which has been a lot of fun. Um, I love to grow flowers, definitely, um, for cut flowers, but and also just to have a beautiful landscape in our yard. Um, we have kids, so we definitely have to have a large green space for them to play soccer and play and all that, which is a lot of fun. Um, we also deal with some pests and some wildlife. <laughs> we have tons of birds, tons of squirrels, chipmunks, bears, deer, you name it, we probably have it. As you can see, we're in the forest. <laughs> so with the beautiful evergreens comes, you know, the wildlife and it's their home too. So it's beautiful to see them 
um, in their natural habitat. But, um, you know, I grow cherry tomatoes and sometimes I don't get to eat any because the squirrels eat them all. So those are some of the challenges that I face here. Um, we're also in a semi-arid climate. We get very, very little water. Um, we irrigate here with uh, drip and sprinklers, obviously. Um, but there is this little corner of our property. Actually, it's in the middle of our property. <laughs> Um, and we call it the secret garden because it is just, if you drove past it on our driveway, you probably wouldn't even see it from the road. Um, it's just sort of like full of evergreens and um, lilac bushes, irises, and it's just a really neat space. And there's actually no irrigation there. So when um, the original plants were planted, I'm sure that they were uh, watered really well. And, and we get, you know, a, a bit of rain once in a while, but they deal with a lot of dryness. Um, and they thrive. So it's it's really a nice uh, spot in our yard. Um, it's really nice to see, you know, the different ways you can kind of create microclimates in your own property. Um, so that's something I'm really passionate about. Also regenerative uh, gardening, um, giving back to our soil and making sure that our, our beautiful yards are also healthy because I think that creates a beautiful yard actually. <laughs> Um, I like to say a beautiful yard is a healthy yard. Um, so just feeding our soil and giving it the nutrients we need um, really, really um, makes a successful garden, right? And it takes a lot of the pressure off to um, make these plants thrive when they're not actually that happy. Those are some of the things I'm really interested in. Um, I love to garden. It's been such a joy to see other um, fellow YouTubers um, create spaces. Chaney, your new property is beautiful. <laughs> um, and throughout the winter seasons, I do um, start seeds um, for a lot of my vegetables, for my cut flowers. Um, I definitely love trying the winter sowing method. It has been such a joy. Some plants just really do well with the winter sowing method. That's with those winter jugs, you know, you put them in the snow and then by the spring, they're like a pretty decent plant planting them out in your landscape. Um, we have fruit trees, we have a mini orchard, if you want to call it that. Um, we just, we like, we just love everything. A <laughs> little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will um, insert some more um, clips and pictures um, to give you a view of what our garden looks like when it's actually beautiful and green. <laughs> um, so here I am in front of some of our orchard uh, trees. We have apple, pear, plum. The apricot didn't make it. Uh, we also have cherry and it's been a lot of fun to um, kind of, you know, take advantage of these mature trees as we sort of learn about um, how to take care of apples and what, what you know, fruit trees need and the different pruning and things like that. So that's been a lot of fun. So as you can see bef behind me, I've got some um, apple trees and, and below I actually planted um, underneath. We used to have grass in this area. And grass, as you know, is not very um, beneficial. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's definitely necessary for kids to play on. Um, but as far as, you know, as far as tree health, it's not the best thing to have above um, your roots. So I actually planted some beneficial perennials underneath. A lot of bulbs as well to come up in the spring. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. So behind me is what I was calling our secret garden. Um, and we have just like a circular driveway and in the middle is just this little area that you just don't expect to see. Um, so like I said, we've got firs and pines and junipers that grow um, very easily in our dry climate without irrigation in this little area. Um, but I've added some things. We've got like a little arbor here made out of just um, Saskatoon berry branches. I think you guys call them service berry, um, our neighbors to the south. <laughs> so anyway, we have those growing everywhere. So I made like a little arbor here um, just to kind of walk through because it just feels so magical when you're in here um, and I think in the spring I'll do some jobs cleaning it up and just kind of reclaiming some of the pathways that were there but it's a really nice space very serene very unexpected and I really like this area of our property we have an extremely windy day here so I hope you can hear me <laughs> this is another spot that I have really enjoyed we did this uh, project this year this little area so this is my flower shed. I cut, cut flowers for selling at a local store here in town. And I also dry and store a lot of my supplies in this shed. And it's been a lot of fun to sort of decorate and landscape around. Uh, I really like raised bed gardening for the obvious reasons, you know, less weed pressure and it's a little bit elevated, easier to weed and take care of. And it just looks so beautiful in my opinion. So I've got, um, I think, eight raised beds in this area, just kind of going for that cottagey look. And then to my other side, I've got this uh, peony bed. 
So I've got about 60 or 70 peonies growing here, obviously for cut flowers. Um, but then I intermixed it with some uh, perennials as well. It sort of extends the season, so it's not just this big flush of peonies, but also some perennials blooming intermixed as well. So this area has been a joy to use and grow and um, just be, be in. We are in my flower garden. So this area is about 33 by 90, I think, about 3,000 square feet. And it gives me a great space. I have about 24 uh, four by eight beds and it gives me a great space to try different cut flowers. Um, every space is so unique. Every year is so unique. So it's, it's really interesting to kind of see what flowers work and what flowers don't work. Um, depending on, like I said, the season, the year, there could be extreme pressure from pests. Um, and also some flowers just don't work in your zone. So I think it's been a lot of fun um, just to try what works and what doesn't work here. Um, so you can see everything's, everything's hit by the frost, so there's nothing growing here. If you're familiar with permaculture gardening or regenerative, regenerative gardening, <laughs> you, can, um, you know that it's very beneficial to leave some of your plants up um, in the winter months for birds, um, overwintering pet officials. Um, I heard somewhere that like 90% of our uh, bugs are actually beneficial to us. So I would rather leave them here and let them overwinter and sort of get a head start on the next season, getting all the um, pests that you don't kind of want around. So yeah, I've grown zinnias, cosmos, snapdragons, straw flowers, sunflowers, you name it. I have probably tried it and it is so fun to arrange them. It's so fun to grow them and it's so fun to dream of what to grow in the next year which is what I'm going to be doing soon. I hope you enjoyed my tour. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, some of the other things I do on my channel are crafting with what I grow. Obviously with the dried flowers I do a lot of wreaths and that type of thing. I also love house plants. <laughs> uh, growing house plants just gives us that extra little you know, dirt underneath our fingernails when we can't do that outside. <laughs> but yeah, nice to meet you guys all via internet. And I hope you guys have a great day. And thanks again, Janie, for putting this together. Carissa, you are just about the most well-rounded gardener I've ever met. Your garden is gorgeous and you're so lucky that you have such a big space that you can do all the things that you want to do on your garden. I am so excited to watch more of your videos on your YouTube channel and thank you so much for, for taking the time to submit that awesome video. Next garden I have for you is from Kim. Kim lives in Stillwater, Minnesota, and I cannot wait to show you this garden. I'm just gonna get started and show you the photos because they're beautiful. Look at this vista. Look at it, it's so pretty. Okay, so it looks like there's alliums. It looks like, I think those are primrose. I definitely see some tulips. It's gorgeous, it is so pretty. Oh my goodness, Kim, this is just so beautiful. And with the tattoo in the background, man, this is just about, when I saw this picture, my mouth dropped. It was so beautiful. So you can see that Kim has a lot of hardscape going on in her garden and it's beautiful. She has some raised beds and I think Kim is a gardener uh, with a similar gardening taste in mind. It looks like Kim likes to fill up every blank spot she has in her garden. Um, so you can see, I can see some petunias stuck in between. I see some alliums. I see some lilies, of course. I actually even see some tropicals, which is amazing. And then I can see this pot right in front Do does have some dahlias. And then if you look in the back, way in the back in the back left, you can tell she's still going. She's got some white proven winter cans back there. But this is just, it's gorgeous. Here's some big elephant ears she's got. Oh man, and just kind of just filling up every square inch in her garden, which is exactly the look that I love. And then finally, Kim, my goodness, my goodness. Hydrangeas, I'm, I think those are alliums. Correct me if I'm wrong, but holy moly, this is absolutely beautiful. And it just shows what you can do in a zone four garden with a short growing season. You can grow tropicals, you can grow color, you can grow everything that's absolutely beautiful. So Kim says the plants that thrive in her garden are hostas, brunera, hydrangea, roses, nepeta, and baptisia. I, I think I'm gonna try baptisia for the first time 
this upcoming year. Baptisia is rated up to a zone nine, so I think I wanna try it. Uh, she wishes she could plant in her zone four garden, she wishes she could plant Budlia or butterfly bush, perennial hibiscus, and hookra. Um, the biggest challenge she faces is not having enough six plus hours of growing areas. And I could see that because if you look at the pictures she has, it's almost like her property is surrounded by trees, which makes it look beautiful. It makes it look like one of those garden rooms, um, which I, I love, but I can see that that might be tough not having enough um, not having enough full sun. So there's always a give and take when you plant a whole bunch of shade trees, you're just not gonna have as much sun, sun to grow things. And then Kim says her advice for other zone four gardeners is to take the time to enjoy your garden and don't be afraid to choose plants that push your growing zone. So Kim, great advice. Again, that's in our zone three video, that was kind of across the board, the advice that the zone three gardeners gave. So it looks like the zone four gardeners are starting uh, uh, that advice as well. So thank you so much, Kim, for sharing your beautiful, beautiful garden. You, you and I have the same taste in gardening styles. I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. Next garden I have to share with you all is from Ottawa, Canada, and that is Ingrid's garden. And Ingrid has a beautiful garden, but before I show you pictures, I wanted to read her advice for other zone four gardeners to you first, because I think it pertains to zone four, but also all of us. She says, your garden should bring you joy and peace. Surround yourself with the plants, flowers, shrubs, decor that will bring you that feeling. Lastly, your garden is living art. It's okay to keep changing it if something doesn't work. Enjoy. I live in Ottawa, Canada, so our growing season is dormant for the coming winter. So I'm sending pictures of my garden for fall, winter, and for spring, summer. There's beauty in both. And I, when I read this, I loved this. So let me show you some of her fall, winter pictures. You can see that Ingrid, there's a, there's a good covering of snow already, but you can see that she has lots of winter interest going on. You can see this beautiful bird bath, the bird feeder, and then these evergreen bushes that are just, they're so pretty covered with snow. I love that look. And then her front yard. I don't know. I, I'm not completely familiar with burning bush because we don't, we don't plant that here, but I think this is burning bush right here. It's so pretty. She's right. There's beauty in both. Now, here is spring summer. Look at what a difference it makes. It's just like everything has just come alive. Everything's all different shades of green. One of the things I love in Ingrid's garden is I love her structures that she has. She has really, really beautiful structures. Um, if you look in her backyard, she has this little patio area and look at these hydrangeas. They're beautiful. And then going to the front yard, she has this beautiful butterfly bench, which is just perfect winter interest and then perfect spring and summer interest. This is, this is really gorgeous, Ingrid. So Ingrid says the plants that thrive in her garden are hydrangeas, daisies, lilies, burning bush, evergreens, apple trees, service berry shrubs and trees, peonies, rose of Sharon, geraniums, euonymus, grasses, butterfly bush, vines, and lilac. So that's really interesting that she says that butterfly bush thrives in her zone four garden uh, when Kim said butterfly bush doesn't thrive in her garden. So that's super interesting, you guys. So just because you live in zone four, the you know, zones are different. Here in California, zone nine, it's completely different if you go two hours away from me, you get to the coast and it's foggy and it barely ever gets above 95 degrees. And then you come two hours out east my way and all summer it's above 100 degrees. So, and we're still, we're both zone 9B. So, you know, kind of just play with it a little bit. Uh, so Ingrid says the plants that she wishes she could plant, but it just doesn't work in her area are, is grass because she has a female dog and she's, tr she's constantly trying to patch up the area. <laughs> she says she thinks maybe she'll invent a special green paint that she can spray to cover the brown patches. You let me know how that works for you. <laughs> 
I'm, I, I have a feeling someone's already tried that before. <laughs> she also says she wishes she could plant plants that she sees for warmer zones like mine, and she knows she can't get them here. And yeah, that must be hard. We all have zone envy <laughs> from the other from the other side. I have zone envy. I wish I could plant more evergreens, um, you know, like the Christmas tree looking plants, and I just I just can't. So the biggest challenges that she faces in her garden are weeds growing where she has river rock. Over the years with all her planting, loose soil gets into the stones and weeds love to grow. I try to keep up with pulling them, but it's constant. Also keeping rabbits from eating certain perennials, plants and shrubs like her burning bushes. Every winter, the, the bark gets eaten and stripped away. She's been lucky, but many lose their bushes and have to replace them every year. Ugh. Yeah, that's frustrating. Um, so I, I can imagine that those of you who get really good snow cover, the animals probably just get desperate and just just wanna eat everything that's in your gardens just because they don't have access to other food. I bet you that's tough. I bet that's tough, I'm sure it is. I'm sure you're all nodding your heads right now. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, Ingrid. Your garden is beautiful, it's really inspiring, and I love your advice for making sure that you are building a garden that brings you joy and peace. I think that that is great advice. Thank you for submitting. Next garden is from Nancy. She gardens in St. Paul, Minnesota, and Nancy actually has a YouTube channel called Hosta and Lily Garden. So for those of you who in zone four, those of you in Minnesota or those of you who love hostas and lilies like myself, make sure to check out her YouTube channel. Again, I will link all of these in the description down below. Just go underneath my video, click that more button, and that will bring up all my, my whole description and it'll have all of the links of everybody that I featured. So uh, Nancy submitted a little bit of a slideshow over the year. I'll start playing it in a second, but I first wanted to just talk about the plants that she said thrive in her garden. She says, catmint, coneflowers, hydrangeas, phlox, lilies, hostas, astilbe, and geraniums. Beautiful. She wishes she could grow Japanese maples and bougainvillea, which I get, I absolutely get it. We are borderline with bougainvillea, so it's it's a tough one. It's definitely more of a tropical plant. The biggest challenges she faces are rabbits and deer, and if she could give one piece of advice to other gardeners in uh, that garden in zone four, she said, the gardening is too short for us, but you can start plants early indoors. Absolutely. Get yourself a setup like I have here, and you, you can do so much and be ready to go once your last frost passes, and then you can get yourself started early. I mean, you could really push it. You could save yourself a bunch of time. I, I definitely agree with Nancy. So let me get started with the slideshow. So here in Nancy's garden looks like her front yard. She has this beautiful tree that's blooming. Tulips. Here is, oh, look at that bleeding heart, you guys. It's so pretty. And then some more blooming bushes or blooming trees. I wish I could point them out. I know that's yarrow right there. That's really, really beautiful. Here's June with some hostas. That looks like nepeta and coleus. Some shasta daisies beautiful. Again, Nancy plants like I do. Oh my goodness. Let me pause this. Look at how pretty this is. Oh my goodness. I love this. I love this. I love this look of gardens. I think it's so pretty. This is such good inspiration for me, Nancy, because over on the north side of my house, I'm doing my secret shade garden and all of this would be so pretty in that. So look, she's got lamium that's under planting some hosta she has there. Um, that looks like a dogwood and some astilbe. Oh, I just love this. And then the little pot in the middle with some coleus sticking out and then some lilies behind. Oh, that is so pretty. So I wonder if this fence is here to protect the plants from, um, from wildlife. I'd be interested to know why that fence was there. But I love the little stepping stone pathway she has. Man, that is beautiful, Nancy. Okay, here's July, the peak of the summer, the yarrow and the Shasta daisies are in, oh, look at this color. Oh my goodness, look at how beautiful. Lilies and phlox, and that looks like uh, delphinium or larkspur. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Veronica, that looks like butterfly weed, and then some beautiful hydrangeas. Wow, look at that. I love it when colors just mixed like that. It's the best. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. That is good. Look at all those corn coneflowers and lilies. Monarda. Wow. Nancy. 
This is gorgeous. You are really making the most out of a short growing season. I bet your neighbors just stop and stare at your garden. It is beautiful. Nancy, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Again, I will link her social media channel down below. Um, it is called Hosta and Lily Garden. Thank you so much, Nancy, for submitting. You have a beautiful garden. Next garden is a fun one because it's a little bit different. There is a big pond in the middle of this garden, which makes it really fun because it's all kind of um, uh, around the pond planting. So this garden is from Patricia. She lives in Millinocket, Maine, all the way over in Maine. Again, this is zone 4B that she lives in. Um, she says the plants that thrive in her garden are peonies, hostas, Mums and of course annuals do well, petunias every year. Right there with you, Patricia. Uh, she says she wishes she could grow oleander, but it's probably a good thing because it's too cold um, and they're very toxic. Yes, they are. We have oleander growing everywhere. It's like the ultimate freeway plant that grows on the sides of the freeways, but I still love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, she says she would also absolutely love to grow crepe marble trees. Patricia says the biggest challenge she faces in her garden is keeping the soil healthy, uh, keeping things from heaving by the frost, having reblooming plants that don't have time to rebloom because of their short growing season, and Japanese beetles that have only recently become a problem. If she could give one piece of advice to other gardeners in zone four, she says, Push the zone. We're 4B, but I have several zone 5 plants that do very well. So let me show you Patricia's video. It's really neat. She has this gorgeous pond in the middle of her garden. Look at how pretty that is. Look at how gorgeous. Okay, let me back this up a little bit. I wanna point out something that I saw. Look at that window on the fence with the shutters. Patricia, I love that. <laughs> it's so pretty. What a good idea. What a good idea. That is so pretty. At first I thought that that was like a little shed that had a window in it. And then I think I realized, I think that's just your fence. That, I mean, I, I know that's not the plants or anything, but what a good idea. <laughs> I love this because I'm getting so many good ideas from you all. So she has this beautiful pond and all these plants around the pond, um, really gorgeous. And I wonder if her pond creates kind of like a little microclimate in her garden that allows the plants to be a little bit warmer. So lots of pretty hostas, lots of pretty evergreens. I see some hookra back there. And again, more of those rock piles that she's kind of just planting in. You did a beautiful job and I love that window on the fence. I, I, I'm gonna copy you, Patricia, I'm sorry. I bet you a lot of other people are gonna copy you too. That is beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, last but not least, I have a garden from Tony. Tony lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is zone 4B. He actually has his own Instagram called plant.practitioner. So again, I will link it below. I cannot wait to follow you on there, Tony. He says plants that thrive in his Minneapolis garden are plants like yarrow, sedum, allium, coneflower, veronica, and many Midwest natives like milkweed, which I think is great. Uh, plants that he wishes he could plant in his garden are lavender, caryopteris, nyphophia, and budlia, all heat-loving plants and plants that really don't like humidity. So I can see why they don't do very well there. The biggest challenge he faces in his garden are invasive insects like Japanese beetles and extreme weather conditions such as high heat and humidity in the dog days of summer, periodic drought conditions in our brutal Minnesota winters. I can imagine that must be tough. Uh, if you could give one piece of advice to other gardeners in zone four, what would it be? And he says, your gardens will never be finished or perfect or without trials and tribulations. And I think that is very, very good advice and something that we all should remember. So Tony's garden, when he submitted the photos, he had 
titles to all of his photos. So he must name his gardens. So this one he calls the Front Steps Garden. And this one, I mean, you all, your eyes are probably drawn to the same thing my eyes were. And that is the grasses that he planted in this garden. It just softens up the look of this garden and his house. Looks like he has a pretty square house, just like mine. And these grasses that he has growing in here are beautiful. And I'm gonna have to do something like that. Next garden he showed is his mixed border garden, which I my mouth dropped open when I saw this because it was so pretty. Looks like he's got maybe Rudbeckia here, some purple Veronica, but over here on the left, it looks like he has some lamb's ear growing. I think that's the big ear lamb's ear, Helen von Stein lamb's ear, that he has let bloom. A lot of people just cut the blooms off automatically. He has let them bloom, which honestly, they're pretty interesting. They have an interesting structure, and I bet the pollinators are obsessed, obsessed with your garden that you have that. He then has his sidewalk garden that I'm sure his neighbors just stop and stare. Lots of cones, cone flower. Looks like alliums. I think that those are alliums, maybe some lilies that aren't blooming yet, but just like a complete mix of color. Are those hollyhocks behind there? They're kind of out of focus, but something really tall back there, which is neat. Then I saved the best for last in his backyard. It looks like his backyard. He has what he calls the water feature garden. And you can see he's kind of mounded this area up. I just, I love these berms you guys have in your gardens. And you know, he's got rocks and he's got uh, branches. But if you look at from the front, you can see he has a little waterfall in the pond here. And it's gorgeous. It is so pretty. And Tony, let us know in the comments if you're watching this, if that is one of those pondless waterfalls from like pondscapes, you know, that Garden Answer has, or if this is just a regular pond waterfall. I just think it's so pretty and I love that you have kind of mounded everything up over it because it's just giving so much like interest and depth to your garden and it is beautiful. It is really, really pretty and it is great inspiration for a zone four garden in Minnesota. So thank you so much, Tony, for submitting and thank you all of you who submitted your gardens. Zone four, you really represented. I am proud of you. Your gardens are gorgeous. So make sure that you stay tuned, subscribe so you can get all the rest of the zones. I am doing a playlist. I'll link the playlist down below and that is gonna have all the way zone three, all the way through zone 10, all of my videos so you can watch them all and get a bunch of inspiration. I am shocked how much inspiration I'm getting from, you know, gardeners that are pretty much the opposite of my gardening zone, but it's just fantastic just to see what you all do. Um, so this is, this is fun. This is really, really great. So stay tuned tomorrow. The next video that comes out will be zone five. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.